Hello my friends, we got a short one today because I cannot maintain my health and well-being in the cold season to save my life. More on that later, what I can maintain in these trying times is my love of D&D and my need to constantly create new characters. My husband has actually decided to try his hand at DMing, so what a wonderful excuse to just start investigating the different combinations for a playable character. In my Drawing Pantheon Symbols video, I talk briefly about really wanting to play a cleric multiclassed with a few sorcerer levels. However, I've been a cleric for about half of the D&D campaigns, one-shots, or what have you that I have been involved in, and while I do really, really love the role, I just thought it might be fun to explore a few of the multitude of other options that I have available to me. So of course, I came up with three potential characters, I immediately fell in love with all of them, and I thought that maybe drawing them, fleshing them out, a little by talking about them in a video uh, might help me decide which ones I want to actually play for this campaign and which ones I'll save for another time. As you probably can tell from the title, this video is not a full render video, I'm just doing a weird different sketching style. Not even sure you can call it sketching so much as just blocking in basic shapes, but it's something I've seen a couple artists that I admire do, like Prickly Alpaca, just skipping the sketching and going straight to blocking in shapes and colors. And it's weird, it was kind of hard to get into at first because I had to use my brain cells to think about both costume design and color simultaneously, which, you know, that wasn't something I was consciously aware that I was doing, thinking about color and costume design separately from each other. But it is interesting trying a different method and seeing how my brain corrects for the discrepancies. Uh, so you will watch me struggle a lot with coloring the shapes in the first uh, character in this drawing. Um, I personally think it got easier with time, but I am not sure how much that will show in a sped up drawing. So this first character is a Yuan T, and since Yuan Ts do have a snake and reptilian features, I wanted to give her a mouth like Mylena from Mortal Kombat, which I know that's not technically snake-like, but it was just a very fun visual flavor that I thought would look really cool on her character design. Um, but of course, if it ever became a problem for the campaign, it's not something I'm so committed to having that I wouldn't give it up. But this Yuan T, uh, she doesn't have a name. Actually, none of the characters have names yet because um, naming characters is always sort of a process for me. And I mean, I'm open to suggestions or starting points because I truly am no thoughts head empty in that area of character creation at the moment. Anyways, this lovely lady with so much teeth is an aberrant mind sorcerer, which basically means that her sorcerer powers are drawn from something foreign, from the astral plane or from the far realm. I actually specifically chose this class because of the whole multiverse magic poisoning being the source of her power. First of all, as a DM, I always appreciate it when my players throw me a bone and leave a little mystery that I can weave into their storyline. But second of all, this campaign is going to be loosely inspired by the Malazan Book of the Fallen series, which is a very long but very wonderful series of high fantasy books. And one of the sort of key features of the magic system is that power is drawn from what is called a warren, which in a very simplified sense is another realm or other world. In that way, the aberrant mind subclass for sorcerers fits nearly perfectly. And of course, just to get sort of a vague sense of her personality, I picked an alignment for each of these characters. This Yuan T, I wanted to make her neutral evil. I was a little torn between neutral and lawful, but I eventually landed on neutral. I'm not here to argue about D&D alignments. I feel like everybody understands them a little bit differently, but I chose neutral because I wouldn't say that she has a set of principles, but I also wouldn't say she does horrible things impulsively on a whim when she feels like it. And I chose evil, of course, Yuan T characteristics, but also because her driving force is very self-serving. She doesn't find the righteous road to be the easier way to get what she wants, and she only works to get what she wants. My only concern with playing this character is that I'm not sure our party will be set up with a healer. I think because of the whole magic and Malazan hook, there will be a lot of players that will probably also end up being spellcasters and not necessarily a cleric. Um, and while in some sense it's the DM's job to make sure that the combat and story are suitable for the characters in the game, if everybody builds a squishy soft back of the line character. It might not be the best for team composition, but it is D&D and in the words of Dr. Ian Malcolm, life finds a way. <laughs> 
Here we can move on to my next nameless character. This one is a hobgoblin barbarian and I wasn't super in love with her at first because I basically designed her to make up for what the Yuan T and what I thought the party would lack, which to put it bluntly is hit points. Um, but as I looked into subclasses for barbarians, I found the wild magic path subclass, which has a very cool looking wild surge magic table, which I'm definitely going to forget to roll for multiple times, but also the ability to turn on magic awareness, which is kind of like a detect magic spell, but it has twice the range of the typical detect magic spell, and I just think it would be a really interesting ability to have in a world where the threads of magics from other universes are constantly being pulled around. But what really sealed the deal for me really liking this character was the overall design. I started with her face, which was the only thing I had any idea of what I wanted to do with at first. Hobgoblins are the smartest of the three playable goblinoids in D&D. They're sort of militant and they are usually depicted with reddish or green gray skin tones, dark hair, big flat noses, pointy ears, and sharp teeth. And I started drawing my character and I was just incredibly happy to be doing so. I wanted to give her a very athletic figure, very much inspired by Patty, better known as Lean Beef Patty from TikTok and Instagram, as well as Michiko Nishiwaki, an extremely talented woman who was also the first Japanese female bodybuilding champion. But because I was trying to keep the entire sketch relatively loose, I didn't want to take too much time defining all the muscle or perfecting any particular spot of the composition. As per the typical qualities of hobgoblins, I gave her a lot of thick dark hair that would run down her back and I think a little bit like a hyena or a lion, some fluff by her ears as well as some hair on her arms and legs because let's be honest if the men are genetically predisposed to being pretty hairy the women probably are too. Unfortunately I do cover up the detail of the fluffy hair on her legs because I give her boots later in the drawing process but it's okay you and I know that it's there in our hearts. I also give her this weird jawbone armor piece around her head for no reason in particular because I just really wanted to draw a lot of teeth that day, I guess. I give her tattoos at this point because besides the general genetic features, I didn't really have any design plans. I haven't figured out if she's gonna have a story behind her tattoos. It might be a cultural thing or maybe a meaningful personal thing, but honestly it would suit her personality very strongly if she just got the tattoos because she wanted them and thought they looked looked cool, which right now in sketching or whatever you would call this phase, I can just imply the existence of some cool tattoos without thinking about it too hard. But when I do actually have to render her, that's a lot of tattoo design and placement that I'm going to have to more or less intentionally think about, which is, uh, but also a problem for future me and not present me. <laughs> I'm not exactly set on an alignment for this character yet, though I'm leaning towards chaotic neutral. While hobgoblins typically err to the lawful side, I imagine this character might have been disconnected from her group for one reason or another, and sort of shuns the closed mindset that things can only exist one way that her family and peers might have had. And with wild magic being as random as it is, it makes sense that the character would have had more chaotic inclinations. I also picked neutral just because she doesn't really strike me as a for the greater good person, but I also don't think she's a particularly selfish, self-serving person either. Um, there's a thread in there somewhere about being a methodical person in an attempt to balance the chaos of wild magic that she has known in her lifetime, but I'm just speculating. I have to think about that one a little bit more. This last character was actually the first one that I had decided that I would design for the campaign. She is a halfling wizard blade singer, and I know I know you might remember that I already talked about Magda Makai, a particular gnome blade singer in a different setting, but but, but it's different, it's different. <laughs> I wanted to try more melee style characters without dropping spellcasting, and I know I could have gone Hexblade Warlock instead, but I've been meaning to try the wizard class out for quite a while. And she's not just a halfling because I want more powerful short characters in my life. Stout halfling is actually a pretty nice match for a blade singing wizard because um, they get that dexterity and constitution buff. Her alignment would be neutral good, which I know it sounds boring. But honestly, neutral good is kind of underrated, and I think it's where a lot of people intend to end up. A neutral good character will help when they can and try to do the good thing, the right thing, with not really a regard nor disregard for the laws or your personal impulses. Your loyalties lie true to yourself without becoming an incredibly selfish person, which sets you up to pretty much be the Spider-Man of your D&D group, or the Batman, or Uncle Iroh. And who doesn't want to be Uncle Iroh? He's 
literally the best. And even though those characters are all pretty different in motive, personality, age, and wisdom, they're all usually trying to do what they believe is the right thing, even if it means breaking a few laws or choosing what they think is the high ground even if it's the hard way. And with that, here's our sketches. I know, I know it's not much. You're used to the high fancy renders and they'll come. I just need a little more time to recover. I do plan to stop in some place and get this checked out because this cough has just been getting worse. You would not believe how many coughs I am cutting out of this audio. I am part of Club Wheezy, the breathing squad, um, also known as being an asthmatic. I've known I've had asthma for almost as long as I can remember, so I've gotten relatively good at managing it, but but after recovering from COVID, my lung capacity has just felt like it's been slowly decreasing day by day. Um, and it's kind of on me for forgetting that asthma and COVID don't mix well, but at the same time, it's a little hard to keep yourself unaffected when it's someone you share a living space with. Enough about me though, I'm doing okay. Back to these characters. I gotta say at the end of the day, I'm really, really leaning towards the Hobgoblin. Just because she's pretty different from most of the characters that I've played in campaigns before, but honestly, I would be super happy to play all of them. Nothing is set in stone. My mind might change when I decide on more things like background or learn a little bit Bit more about the campaign goals or the party makeup or even just rendering them might change my mind. Um, but I would be happy to hear your thoughts or headcanons for these characters. As for the new sketching or color blocking style, I really liked it. Um, it was, like I said, difficult at first to try out, but in the end, it gave me a very quick sense of characters and helped me keep the whole design very loose and it was extremely not stressful. If you want to try it out, I recommend it. It was a weird experience, but I don't know, we'll see if I keep using it. I do genuinely enjoy the actual sketching process, so we'll see. At any rate, thank you so much for putting up with me and my wacky schedules and delays lately. You are all so cool and I hope you're all taking way better care of yourselves than I am taking care of myself. But stick around if you want to see me continue rendering these characters and many many more and we'll see if I keep up with this weird color blocking art style or just go back to sketching in my usual way. And we'll also see which character I end up choosing or if I start making more characters or if I end up playing a cleric again, which would be fine, but who knows? <laughs> Not me. <laughs>